What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Heavyweight Nation podcast. And today we got a very special guest. We got the guys from over at the Clash of Combat podcast, Caden Crosby. Welcome to the show, guys. How are you guys doing today? Let's go. Thanks, Derek. We're doing good. 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 What what's what's making you bring up back the podcast? Um it's it was very hard to get people to do it during the season. And mm-hmm. now that like uh the season's over, you know, obviously not over because obviously the Olympics coming up, but sure. a lot of the guys are a little bit more available. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them reached back out and were like, hey, I know I couldn't, you know, hop on during uh, the during the season, but now that it's the summer, I have a little bit more free time. Yeah. So I was like, sure, you know, might as well just start start cranking them out a little bit now. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm sure it's the same, you know, for you guys. Both of you guys are competing. And I know you guys are big on the in-person videos, so it makes it, I, I'm, I'm sure, 10 times harder trying to get yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, it, during the ideally, it's it's just more for our schedule. Like, we can't go, uh, you know, just travel to anywhere just because we're training and stuff, and we're just limited in that way. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, so obviously we've had we've had you on the on the show a couple times, Caden, but Crosby, First time on the show, man. Yeah, Let's time. uh we'll kind of talk a little bit about you first and then we'll talk a little bit about Clash of Combat, some things you guys have cooking for the future and everything like that. So Crosby, let's uh, first thing I want to know is how did you meet Caden? What was that like? Like, how did oh, that happen? Uh he was it, probably on his back getting pinned. I'm like, hey, right. Caden. <laughs> no, we uh we've known each other since since really forever. Cause we, I started wrestling in like kindergarten when you started like first. Yeah, first you, I started before me. Probably. Yeah, it was probably around the same time. And my dad was the president of our youth club, and his dad was the head coach of the youth club. And so we kind of just met through the West Bend Wildcats and family, pretty much. And then his dad was my head coach through youth all the way through high school, and we were kind of just friends forever. So was that kind of a no brainer for you to to kind of go with Caden over to Parkside? Uh, uh, that's a weird situation right there. No, I mean, so I was I was gonna go into electrical, and Caden was trying to talk me into coming to Parkside for like a while. I wish we still had the text messages. Like, yeah. there was like a huge back and forth for a while of him trying to say like we can we can make this work, blah, 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 like mm-hmm. and. Because at that point, it's not like he wasn't making any money. I definitely wasn't making any money <laughs> off of social media and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, then after my senior season, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to be able to keep wrestling and stuff. I was like, you know what? If I'm going to wrestle, I'm not going to go anywhere other than Parkside because I didn't really care to go to any other school. Mm-hmm. So it kind of just worked out good. And, like, how has this situation kind of been for you? What's, like, the school's reaction to having Kate in there and having you guys kind of meeting some of the best wrestlers in the United States of America? And is there any kind of pushback from the school? No. I, I mean, I would say, like, like, we're just like any other person. Like, there's no special treatment. Maybe, like, maybe, I don't know if they'd be expecting more from us. But, yeah, I mean, just, like, we're just regular, you know, people just wrestling. Just two student athletes, basically, and – uh um yeah no special treatment really i don't think the school even acknowledges yeah. it at yeah all. That's, that's true i don't think it, yeah i don't even know if like sometimes it's like do people know of like what we do and it's just like i think sometimes you know you hear like some trainers talk or whatever but um yeah and, and, and i'm sure uh it's it has it been hard for you especially caden you know getting out there and making these videos traveling and then having to come back and compete at you guys are pretty much like the highest division two level. I mean, you guys are always in the top 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, especially like, you know, we lost in the past two years, you know, we all we lost one duel. Um, and, you know, I just, I guess kind of going back to, you know, to that duel, it was like, it's like we expect ourselves to be at the highest level. And, you know, we know that our team is capable of being just, you know, team champs and, um, you know, going to this next year, we're going like, almost like three years straight now without like losing anyone basically. So it's like, everyone's coming back and like, if it was a year to do it, it's just next year. But I mean, just on like a level, like toughness about how it is like filming and coming back. And of course it's like, yes, it's hard. There's a reason no one else is doing it. Um, And so it's just kind of having a prior priority straight. And um, 
you know, doing what we do. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people have a bias about you on the internet that think that like your coach just lets you do whatever you want. And all these other guys are like, you need to go to practice and Caden gets the special treatment because he goes around and makes the videos. But I feel like that's definitely not true. I feel like you're, you put in a lot of time, Mm -hmm. especially when you film, the room seems to be pretty empty and you're in there with one or two guys. Well, and people, people don't really understand that too. It's like, I don't, I probably film less than 1% of my time in the wrestling room. Like I, I could be doing so much more. It's actually disgusting, but just the, the amount of like how tough it is to really just, you know, you, you probably know just creating content and stuff and especially for doing it for so long. And you know, there's, there's more to life than just like wrestling and content. So, but yeah, I mean, people don't, people don't see it all. So I think that's one thing people need to have uh, both sides of that story. And that leads into my next question. Probably the number one question we had people ask us to ask you is what's next for you guys? You know, you guys have one year of college left, one more year of wrestling. So yeah. what's what's gonna happen to to Caden Henschel? Well, well, Crosby's actually telling me this this plan earlier today. So I'm I'm gonna red shirt this next year. I'm probably gonna take some like an Olympic red shirt. That would be seven. I could be a GA, nine, ten. Basically, I could just outlive. <laughs> <laughs> you can, no, you can just, stay up for a yeah I, I could probably i could probably stay i could maybe be like one of those 30 year olds coming back <laughs> no i d- definitely not this is yeah this will be my last year of course competing in college and you know crosby too crosby will just you know compete stay for four years um it's kind of funny everyone kind of in my grade levels or graduated at all from like my hometown people and whatever and it's like i'm like stuck on like yeah, crosby's yeah. grade it's kind of funny now um, yeah me too yeah. i'm in the same yeah. situation too yeah i got the the extra the extra year staying around yeah but i mean like what's next for me and just my overall idea for the channel is of course i'm never gonna shy away from wrestling just wrestling content in general so like if you've seen like the current uh this new series that i put out it's like russell works basically can like take any any athlete and put them through like basically just kind of like a private lesson of wrestling and just stacking those up um you know wrestling reviews like i don't when was the last time i did it probably half a year ago i was talking with crosby that's like the, the stuff that I'm involved in, it, it takes so much time to like really like plan everything out, you know, get it, get all the emails, download everything, edit everything. And then like, it, it really is truly a lot, but I think getting myself, especially now, once I am graduated and after this wrestling, you know, my wrestling career, let's say concludes would be to have a way better system of how content is ran. Like I could easily be, be putting out, let's say like, you know, six videos a week that are freaking awesome. Now I'm only, you know, putting out like one video a week and, you know, I'm, I'm like limiting myself that way. But, you know, of course it's like, you got to focus up for this last year because this is it, you know, you can, um, you know, work the rest of your life and whatever. So, um, but, you know, as far as just content in general, just creating amazing wrestling content clash, we got some big moves. A, a lot of people have been saying, I even saw one of the comments was saying like, um, whatever happened to clash of combat or why did they stop doing it? But like we stopped doing the like, let's say weekly episodes if we don't hit it, because we, you know, we know that the in-person pods with guests, that's, that's great content. And, you know, me and Crosby just sitting, let's say week after week after week and just maybe just talking. Sometimes it's just like, you know, like this isn't like necessarily why we started doing it. Like we want to meet people, do all this sort of stuff and bring the best content together. So, um, and we're going to put our best foot forward in that way. And we're not going to force feed an episode just to have one. So. Yeah. For sure. And I think, you know, you guys have done a great job with the podcast. I mean, it's 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 crazy to think that your first episode was sitting in Gable Stevenson's living room. Yeah, so that is uh, is so legendary. I think I've I've asked you this, but I'm going to go to Crosby. What was that kind of life for you in that situation to just like be starting a podcast and all of a sudden (laughs) you're hanging out with Gable Stevenson? Yeah, I mean we've said this a bunch so i'm sure people have heard it but like we weren't gonna start the podcast for like another month until kane reached out to gable and he was like yeah you guys want to come up like the next wednesday and we were like holy crap yeah. we like you can't skip out on that at all no no so yeah we drove at like i don't even know like 4 a.m 5 a.m six hours over to his house and that was the most, that was crazy. Yeah. It was definitely the start of something where it's like, dude, like what, like this is absolutely unbelievable what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we got, got there like, off with a bang. For the what? That said, you started it off with a bang, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We, uh, I just remember we were, we got there probably 15, 20 minutes early 
we drove past his house like four times. <laughs> we, were, we were too scared to go in. You were too scared to ring the doorbell. Yeah, of course. And we, and we like we parked in like a school parking lot, and we we're just like sitting there, like just crap in our pants. Pretty yeah, much. Just, pretty much. I'm like, what are we doing right now? Yeah, yeah. And talk a little bit about you know, obviously Brady's not here, but I feel like Brady is like the secret to the magic behind all this. <laughs> 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 he was the man that Superman. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, so I didn't go, I'll get him up how did he like how did he come up with the like the plaque? I feel like that is so like something so special that yeah. nobody else does. So what was like yeah. the vision behind that too? So I mean basically I won't necessarily go into exactly how the podcast started, but um Superman was gonna be like I think like the manager for like the other podcast yeah. just got everyone on our team. We're like, so like, uh, just like how, just like we're so cohesive and we all wanted everyone to kind of be a part of something and kind of our little group that we had. Um, it was just like, we all wanted everyone to be involved in a different way. And then uh, we kind of were run this or she, we were kind of talking. He was like, yeah, you can make like a thing to give to every single guest. Cause we thought it's like, you know what, if we're going through all this effort, it's like, we got to maybe have something that, you know, resembles not only us, but that can give to them and being like, holy cow, this is super cool. Yeah. And so he has like a shop basically uh, in his house or, you know, kind of outside the house there, that the shoe shop, the shoe shop. And uh, yeah, he makes them all handmade. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, super sick. And I'm so glad we continued with it. So. And he, I know even he's trying to grow his presence on social media as well. Has that kind of been a thing that you influence some of your close friends on? This is something that you can make a, a little bit of a little bit of money on at least to kind sure. of, I mean, yeah. Like at the end of the day, you're not doing it to make money at all because like, if you do yeah. that, you won't grow. So, but like, as for, as far as for him, like he was going crazy. He was on like a post, like a post a day for like almost two months. And, you know, cause him and Crosby were like in a little channel first to 50 K, but of course that kind of fell through. It seems like, um, <laughs> but Shu, um, he can probably speak for himself. Maybe if he gets on here, Um, but he was saying, um, just like for his goals and what he wants to accomplish, like he should probably take a little step back from the the quantity of content he's doing. And I'm, you know, I'm not too exactly sure on that, but I mean, he, you know, he had some pretty viral videos and he's, yeah, he does more followers than crowds. He was just crazy. And he he had like 2000 less than a year ago. So when he got to Parkside, he had under, I think he had like 150 followers. Yeah. Yeah. That's, (laughs) that's pretty funny. That's, that's kind of crazy to think about. But yeah. and I guess we'll talk a little bit about you guys are probably some of the the smartest business people as well. So <laughs> talk a little bit about, you know, obviously you've you've worked with a lot of big name companies and now you guys are what are you part owners or the full owners of Cauliflower? Part part, part, part owners. Yeah. Part, very. So so part 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 owners of Cauliflower. So what was that kind of like for you guys? So I guess for me, it, this was during man, because in order to happen to like a business decision stuff, like it takes time. So like we were, you know, on the phone, like, you know, four months even prior to really coming out with anything and just seeing how this whole process would go. And, you know, I was like with another apparel brand myself with Barbell, which was absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely love working with them. You know, I can still wear this clothes to these day, but um, something that, you know, they had that was different was, you know, a different opportunity for us and just a way that we can like, you know, like, wrestling shoes and just a specific wrestling brand it's like more cohesive it'll be you know it was more affordable you know than let's say for barbell for me and initially we just wanted clash to be you know just through cauliflower but then it's like we probably should just if if i'm if i'm on there it's like we got to kind of go all in with it and you know it's been like slow because i think they're just still trying to like really really get their feet off the ground and it's going to be an exponential growth here but you know like all things it takes time so and then obviously you have your partnership with Rise Fuel. So yes, what has that kind of been nice. like as well? I know they've they've been getting in kind of big with the wrestling game lately. Yeah, no, absolutely. So so they had, I think, Roman they signed first. And then uh, me and Gable, I think, joined up kind of virtually the same time there. They actually just signed, I think, uh, that Forrest. I, I forget her last name, but I think she just got signed today in the group chat, actually. Um, but it's been absolutely amazing. You know, they got, you know, energy drinks, protein, creatine. And it's, I, I always wanted to be a part of, you know, like a supplement brand because it's, it's, it's so, you know, niche specific to us athletes and wrestlers. It's like, it's what they need. And also just, uh, you know, it's like a wrestler owned business too, a former D2 wrestler, Nick Stella. So shout out to him and um, just kind of that whole team over there. It's, it's been awesome. And hopefully we can get down there to Texas and shoot some stuff. So that's awesome, man. So you guys have one more year left to compete. 
I'm sure I can assume what you're going to say the goal is. And I know it's for you definitely bringing home a national title to Parkside. So is, is that the, is that the end goal for this year? Yeah, of course. Individual national title, team national title. And, you know, like I'm looking like at the guys in like in our lineup and, you know, sure we had, you know, what was it for all Americans and even the guys who didn't all American, it's like, dude, every one of us is capable of being at the top. It's just, it's just doing it in that weekend. Like if you can do it in that weekend, then that that's all that matters. And like, it's, it's such a weird, I have such a weird relationship of how I go about, you know, being on that time and my training and just like not also using it, using it as a vision quest, but not at the same time where it maybe overshadows, like overhypes myself and I get too much in my head and too much get like starstruck of it. Um, so it's, it's the whole thing I'm just working out, but I think, you know, after of course falling short, like two years in a row, it's just like, uh, everything, everything happened for a certain reason. And we'll see where that takes us. Do you think people blame your content for that? For what? For, for you falling short the last two years? I'll tell you what, I don't know if I could have been this successful in college if I didn't do YouTube. Like I love doing this and it forces me to be accountable and it forces me to be disciplined in what I do. Because, you know, if, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be playing video games all day. I wouldn't like necessarily like wrestling as much. Like a huge reason why I love wrestling is because I can make content about it because I just, I absolutely love doing that. And, you know, if, if there's like one thing I would say to like, well, if you weren't doing this and you were just training, yeah, sure. Whatever. Like go do it yourself then, buddy. Like it's <laughs> like pe people have to worry about their own problems. You won't, you won't see anyone else like doing like be at your level or better than you un until they're like, they're, they're like, they're just they can just talk like at the end of the day, I'm not wrestling. I'm not winning. I'm not going to accomplish anything for someone else in said place. So, so what are, what are top five guests you want to bring on the podcast this next year? Start it off. Crosby. David Carr. I'm waiting for it. Go ahead. Carr. Yeah. Go ahead. Number one, David Carr. Of course. Of course. So that uh, we'll, we'll pause there. One of the questions somebody asked was, does David Carr know you exist? Crosby. Yeah, I mean, so actually, our families have been close for like years now, and uh, his family's actually his family's actually the ones that got me into wrestling. And we have Thanksgiving. <laughs> You're so tired. I'm joking. <laughs> no, uh, it. I don't even really know how that like all started of me like saying I he's think, my favorite. Well, it was just more because the Keegan versus him, and you didn't. The reason that you don't like. Keegan has tool, let's say as much as because he didn't come on the pod. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and then it kind of it kind of spiraled. Right, wait, okay. I'll answer the question first. Okay. Yeah. Car, we've never met in person. We've actually never had a conversation even <laughs> over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but he does follow me on Instagram. Okay. Respect. And I wish and we I've said happy birthday and he responded in the DMs. So yeah. We're close. So, we're pretty close. You could yeah. Say. So you guys are best friends, basically. Yeah. You're on vacation every summer together. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Got gotcha, you. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. All right. But, so what's top five guests? <laughs> Number one's David Carr, of course. Yeah. So David Carr, then probably. Uh, man, I don't really have a lot of. Well, you you one thing about big for Clash of Combat this next year too is that um, I, I won't say who it is, but we are bringing on another personality that is very well known in the wrestling community to like basically assist us in all this. And like, yeah. Um, so that's like a big thing we have to discuss too more, let's say in the MMA community. Um, but as far as just like wrestlers, like, you know, getting Burroughs, getting Dave, if we yeah. can get Kale Sanderson, getting, you know, David Taylor, that, that is David's probably number two. If your car is number one, Taylor. Yeah. David um, Taylor. Would be really Cause it's, cool. it's just so relevant and stuff. So, so would you guys uh, go out to Oklahoma? Oh, 100%. of course. Of course. Get, get uh Taylor and Gilman. Yeah, I mean, it's just that that's one thing we, we thought about of like, you know, I guess my schedule so filled up because I got, you know, camps and it's still like training and whatever. And um, it's just finding these days to really travel. And once we go to like a college, we want to hit, you know, all the people there as we can and just like maximize our trips. Because that, that's one thing like last year, we, we went to Iowa like five different times. And yeah. it's just like we could have done like all of them. And let's say maybe one like a guest day. each time. Yeah, one guest each time. So it's just kind of being smarter and uh, um, you know, that's the whole thing to navigate there. Yeah. I, I get that for sure. And I know you guys went to you went to Cornell and you went to Penn State as well, right? Yeah, yeah Penn State twice. Penn State twice. And twice. Cornell was during the, the first Penn State trip. Yeah. We just drove up there, it was like three hours. Yeah, man. You guys got some big names, man. That's that's it's great to to have, you know. 
I've had the privilege of talking to Kyle Dake, and let me tell you, he's he's an awesome guy, super cool. If you guys end up going up there, uh, hopefully he still has the trophy room. It's his trophy room is crazy. It's oh really? Nuts, really? Right? Yeah, yeah. We had him, and that's where he filmed. Yeah, you know, we did it on Zoom, and that's where he he was set up at in the trophy room. And man, it was crazy to see everything he's got up on the shelves and stuff like that. Yeah, um, that'd be sweet. That, that's one thing too. We've talked about doing more like films and stuff. Um, you know, um, I think that's one thing that like we're kind of, we could uh definitely like incorporate on the channel. Yeah. So um, like a like a flow film type thing. Yeah, clash like the, film, like the clash film. Clash film, clash film. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. So obviously, you have some pretty good goals this year and some big names to get on on the podcast. But let's just let's say, okay, now Na- you win a national title, team wins a national title. Your goals are all set. <laughs> Caden's face is very hopeful right now. <laughs> is that going to be it? Are you going to ride off into the sunset and just obviously keep making content and stuff yeah. like that? But will you ever yeah. step on the mat again? Yeah, I mean, like I would love to do jujitsu. Like that's okay. One, that would be like that's a what you don't think? <laughs> really? But yeah, maybe that'll be one tournament type deal. Yes. Who knows? Um, but yeah, in the in the in the veteran tournament, maybe. Yeah, you know, masters. You know, like, yeah, I mean, definitely, I would run up some Franklin old vets tournaments, oh, and yeah, of course, I'll face, yeah. I'll face some six year olds if I can. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think it just depends on how everything goes, and it's just like, you know, how I want to start like living my life and stuff. I mean, I got some big uh, decisions planned outside of just wrestling and content, and um, you know, whether that be, well, I just I just won't spoil anything, but yeah, <laughs> just, what are you? We'll just see. We'll see. What are you, what are your degrees in? Marketing, both yeah. of you, right. and, and I'm actually a double major myself. Oh, whoa, whoa, so long. I gotta, I gotta pick up common marketing. Yeah, it, it wasn't, it wasn't his choice to be a double major. They, they made him be a double. Major. It, it was, it was, it was just, a, it was a guiding. It was just like you might as well. Like, so they're like, you're here for this extra time. Might as well just be yeah. a double major. Yeah, basically. Nice, nice. I can't yeah. wait to to apply to a higher class position. Though I'll have to talk to my boss about that though. <laughs> So how many people are actually involved in Clash of Combat? So uh I'll give you this. Over or under 10. What I'm gonna say over. <laughs> no? <laughs> Indirectly. Why? Like I, I'm assuming no, it's no, like you, Crosby, and like, Shu. Yeah. I know listen, I, I got a lot of respect for you. I know you're probably cooking up most of the edits, but I really I would surprise you if there's not somebody helping you. No, it's literally just it's, it's literally just Crosby. just it's Crosby. Not even, it's not even me. It's just Crosby. Yeah. Shoot, yeah, shoot. Like we had Shu, Caden Hooker go on trips with us, yeah. like assistant filming. But as far as like producing and making every single piece of content that Clash has seen in the light of day, it's been probably it's been Crosby. Wow. So, so Crosby is Clash of Combat. You can yeah. say that. You can say that. Some would say. say. Some would say. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That, I, that's surprising to me. Caden, I thought you were the big editor, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, well, I I, I mean, I had all my stuff, but yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I'm sure with, with doing your own stuff. So you hit 400,000 subs recently. What was yeah. that experience like for you? Was that was that an awesome yeah. thing? Yeah, I, I woke up. I saw like a beautiful shining light through my room and it was like 400K. <laughs> no, it's just, it was just another day. We were actually at Nebraska at the PNL event. And I, yeah, I don't even remember the exact time I hit it. I just kind of knew I was going to hit it over the weekend. Um, and uh, I was thinking, I was like talking with Crosby of like, I should probably make like a cool post about it. Um, Cause it's not every day. Let's say that happens. So and I was like, you know what, what about if I caption it? Like four daddy titles, nah, four YouTube play buttons. <laughs> but I'm like, dude, it's just like, like I could like make fun of myself for that. But um, no, it's just, it's just, it's just something like cool. That's like, numbers matter but they don't matter so yeah. he was talking about what he was going to caption it for like weeks. yeah i was i was thinking about it because uh um so when we were at penn state we had bo bartlett on the podcast and he was just kind of talking about uh you know how he, like <coughs> him and srachi would get into some like maybe like little beefs or whatever and he would say like well i got three of them nash like three of them three, things. three of dumb things and like so now like you know he got four dumb things and i'm like you know what i got four dumb things too <laughs> <laughs> too funny man too funny so what do you think are, are we assuming another another penn state national title this year for the team title yeah are we thinking i mean it's yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> people keep saying like Oklahoma State, but it's like you got to think it's going to take more than just David Taylor coming in the first year for them to even mm-hmm. like it might maybe top five, but it's not like they're going to be competing for team title in their first year. And I want to say the portal's closed, right? You can't. I think you can't portal. enter the portal. Yeah, you can't enter the portal. So, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure they only got Wyatt. I think that was pretty much it. Really? For, I think. Unless it was like. I think one more. No. Well, you know, at, at first they did um, Oklahoma. So oh, once David Taylor actually took off, like took position. So like I got like a, like a NIL offer to wrestle there and I had to turn it down. And I'm gonna be like, <laughs> you know what? I have unfinished business at Parkside Division 2. Yeah, of course. So of course, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to stay. And, and yeah. he understood, which is of course fine. He, I'm sure he got it. He yeah. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. David gets it. It's about the grind, man. He, he understands. Yeah. But speaking of that. I know I saw recently that a Division Three national champ has transferred to Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One of our teammates wrestled him last year at uh, U23s. Who was that? I think Caden Hooker. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 At a 197 pounds, too, which has been uh, an iffy weight class for Wisconsin lately. I know. Well, uh, I think every weight class for Wisconsin is going to be probably iffy right now. Yeah. Like, like, oh, they got Hamidi. That's who. That's who the other guy was. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Oklahoma State got Hamidi. Hamidi and Hendrickson to Oklahoma State, and yeah, I like man. Amos is was... Amos is down again for another year. I know. Uh, talking to him recently, he's uh probably going to take another red shirt this year. Really? He got hurt at trials. Yeah, yeah. His other shoulder got hurt at trials. He, it's funny. He, uh, me and him pretty much talk all the time, and he's been begging me to come out to Wisconsin. I gotta get out there at some point soon because hit up the nitty gritty. Yeah. So, obviously, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Caden this one. So, as of the last couple months, you've I, I, I'm gonna hold on. Let me rephrase this. I'm sure not the last couple months. I'm sure it's been your whole life, but over the last couple months in your videos you've decided to, to talk a little bit about god hell yeah brother and of course and of course and i i agree with you 100 percent. and we've seen you know aaron brooks do this kind of thing as well so what has that kind of been like for you was there any kind of nerves kind of in to introduce that topic into your videos i wouldn't say nerves it was just more like i i just knew it would be like a whole different like segment because yeah. I guess, of course, it's like there one thing like in the wrestling community that I like witnessed, you know, after these couple of years of college is like more and more of, you know, just wrestlers that you, you've you seen were more like spreading like God's, um, you know, every, all like Bible quotes and everything. And it's, it, of course, it's like, you know what, it's I, I was always like kind of religious, but I um, maybe like wasn't necessarily as deep as I was now because, you know, each day is a new, a new learning experience in that way. But it was just more like there's so much negative things that people are consuming and watching. And especially just, I think like one thing is like with streamers, just viral streamers, just doing stupid stuff. It's like, and just the whole, how whole TikTok works. It's just, you know, it's just brain rot at the end of the day. And a lot of people are like, they don't have purpose. They don't know what, what they want to accomplish. They don't have guidance. And, you know, if there's one thing that, you know, maybe they can do it with just watching my videos, but me just even just, you know, in, uh, putting in just like a quote from the Bible that there's something just I learned in that sense. And, you know, I will say like Aaron Brooks, like Ram of the East channel, like that is like something that I think is like so cool for him being a guy of like his caliber um, in wrestling, but then just having, you know, that kind of those mindset principles is awesome. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So obviously you guys started making these videos when you were in high school. You started making the wrestling videos, and uh, I know there was a big, big thing with the with the wrestling dummy. What's his name? Waldo. 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 <laughs> so, how is this like exponential growth you've had? You know, from from when you were in high school, when you first started making videos, would you have guessed that this is where you would be now? I don't know if like I would guess. I just like, I mean, I, it was just kind of like. The way the way a wrestling season works is basically how my channel has run for like the past six years. In the summer, it's basically just whatever, whatever's going on, right? But then it's like when season comes around, it's like, okay, you have this dual meet, you have this tournament. Maybe you're just we want to put out a technique video. So you do that. Um, like I, you know, I had goals of I I would see like these YouTubers around my age have like 
2 million, 3 million subscribers. And I'm like, dude, when I'm in college, like I better at least have like 2 million, 2 million subscribers because it's like, I didn't see anything that made what they were doing different from, from what I was doing. And, you know, I had high goals and high expectations. So it was just like, you know, it's, it's, I'm so grateful for the, just the amount of support, just given like how, you know, small and niche the wrestling community is other than like, let's say other niches on YouTube or just in life in general, because the audience is, you know, it's so much capped compared to other, um, other forms, but, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's showing up when you can, it's putting out a lot of content. It's upping the quality every single time. And it's just, it's learning. It's like, no matter if you fail, you can always fail forward. And um, you just got to keep, keep showing up. I, I That's one thing I don't think a lot of people understand is how small and niche, like the, the I wouldn't even say wrestling. Cause I feel like a lot of people that post about wrestling is it's more like combat sports. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of people don't really understand how small that group of people is. Yeah. Like, well, it, it's, it's like, it's like, there's a lot of people don't get me wrong, but compared to an alternative. Yeah. It's very compared to if you were going to sit and talk about NFL football. Yeah. Like hundred percent or baseball, like right. it's the group. Like is... if, if me and Crosby were in a position where we're, let's say we're D2 football players, but we were getting guys <laughs> like Aaron Rodgers on the podcast. We were getting, you know, Pat McAfee on like, just like, yeah, it would be so much more bigger. Um, But yeah, yeah you, you guys would be like the Kelsey brothers. Yeah. But yeah. better. But better. But better. Yeah. You don't have to read off of a iPad. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is a this has been a, a fun one. This is I think this one's a little more laid back than the last time me and Caden talked. I feel like. Mm -hmm. I feel like Crosby, Crosby brings at, the aura. I was gonna yeah. say Crosby brings like a. He's been spinning whatever he's been playing with the entire time we were filming. So it's on the tripod. Yeah. Crosby's actually a huge disc golfer now. He just got the nuke. Yeah. At a play against Nosha. The nuke. The nuke. <laughs> so I know you guys were out at that event in Nebraska where they wrestled on the baseball field. What was that? Was that event pretty cool? Yeah, I I, I wish I was wrestling in it. Like, man, that'd be sick. That was pretty cool. It seemed awesome for sure. Yeah. It was just like no other team like had like a good enough team compared to Askren at all. Like the closest match was like 57 to 18. Like it was and if they if they have a good club, they just didn't bring their best guys. Right. Yeah. Right. That's one thing that was just. So, did you both wrestle in Askren when you guys were in high school and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. I did seventh grade. Started in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. He started at Ringers, mm -hmm. and he was brainwashed into thinking that Askren was horrible for wrestling. Yes, that is true, and that's then... what they do over there. It was. <laughs> That's a, that's a whole conversation. Like, yeah, I, I did get better at ringers, but of course it's like, you know, looking back, if I could, I, if I could have gone to Asker and just involved in the process from the get go, it's like, yeah, I would have been a lot better. hundred percent. Like, so like who are some guys that you, that you met through Asker? Just, well, I mean, uh, you look at guys younger than us. So it's like the Solus, um, you know, like Charlie Millard, he was, he was one partner. I, I wrestled a lot at, he's off to Minnesota's next year. Um, the shadow, the, why the shadow? I didn't really wrestle him, but you know, Parker was always in the room. Like when, you know, when we were in the room, um, I just remember, remember some camps that they had, you know, going on and, you know, you'll see like Yanni walk in the room or yeah. wh whoever they had. Um, but it, it, it wasn't even necessarily just like, it was just, there were so many guys there and they're all, they're all good. No matter if like, whoever it is it's like you see these four time state champs like i wrestled like, like a lot with Matt bianchi as well in there um and like every everyone there has like won something crazy and they're all good and if you can have those good people together especially like at that age yeah you guys are going to be crazy the weirdest thing is is like when like my junior his senior year high school, <laughs> there's like all these little kids that are like in there that are like seventh eighth grade and you don't really think much of them mm -hmm. and now it's like this year you see most of them are committing to like big 10 schools. Right. So it's just kind of crazy to see. Yeah. Like we'd be like, I'd be like a senior, but I'd be wrestling like an eighth grader, seventh grader. And he's like, he was just, he was good at the time. Like he was comparable, yeah. honestly. And it's like, now of course it's like their growth has been exponential. And other half. yeah, the Marisola brothers are, they're pretty damn good. I mean, oh Penn state's got two animals going there for sure. And then I know you mentioned Parker. Parker finally got his national title this year. Shout yeah. out to Parker. Parker's a a longtime guest on the Heavyweight Nation podcast. I I couldn't tell you how many how many times he's came on. 
Sure. That, that that's one guy too we have to get this summer. It's yeah. like um um just like the Wisconsin guys that we were thinking, it's like we could probably always get them. It's just like we we would uh it's it's easier to like plan ahead farther trips so that we yeah. can do that. But for sure. So I, I'll, we're, we'll kind of get into the little bit of, of a fun part of the of the video here. So I see behind you, you've got quite a array of pretty expensive sneakers. Ah, oh, yeah. Man. Look at those suede's up there. Yeah. What's your, what, are, are you a sneakerhead, Caden? Is that, is that? Yeah. Well, so I, I was a sneakerhead, like, or even in middle school. Like, that's when I was like, when I was buying OE reps on like ally ally express for <laughs> 20 bucks. i would sell them for like 150 bucks on ebay and then i would be like okay now i got like like i had 11 a jordan 11 uh like gamma blue Hold on, wait, like K- Kaden, did you just admit on the internet to scamming people when you <laughs> it's not scamming I, I it took them two months to come i like i paid an early fee i no, you can sell them as reps like i sold them as like a rep. Oh, okay okay i'm not <laughs> I'm just like you'd buy them and people do that. It's a good car rope. It's a good car. <laughs> you, you're, you're telling me if I had a freaking purple or neon shoe. Yeah, that's not legit. Oh, that was okay. never even a colorway. Um, but yeah, like I, I was like shoes and I had uh, you know, I even had the suede's when I was in middle school, but I ended up, you know, trying just reselling just because I, I love that whole facet of just the whole business financial stuff. Um, but yeah, this this past year I was was watching Kung Fu Panda and it was like middle wrestling season where it's like the ad revenue is really good. And I was like, you know what? It's like, man, I just, maybe let me just get like a shoe. And then it started like two months of like me being obsessed. And what was I, the, what was the first big shoe purchase of this year? Uh, it, I mean, it was the, uh, it was the cheapest Yeezy I have, which was the carbon belugas. So that was like, and I just wanted to see if my size was good. Cause I didn't want to do my sizing. And before it came, I got like um i got my girlfriend a pair of the slates and then i got the granite in a different size and i was just like so excited and so just i don't know uh i just wanted it so i got it um but yeah this was a super random addiction yeah it was it came out of nowhere and then it was like once a week a new pair of yeezys were just showing yeah that's true like it was like every day like (laughs) yeah it was kind of crazy but yeah i I feel like everybody went through that phase a little bit like of buying expensive shoes for sure yeah. And it like, again, like I was always like into it. Like, you know, I have a crap ton of wrestling shoes and just, it was how many pairs are we up to? What What's the grand total? Well, it went down because I sold a, a bit, but I mean, I think I got up to 32, but also like, um, just with like our own shoes coming out here. Um, it's Whoa. like, yeah, we're about to have just like, you know, hundreds in stock. So if you even count that <laughs> as personal ownership, but that's awesome for sure and how far out are you guys from from being able to are you, are you yeah, not able to it, talk about it or no we, we, we can out? talk whatever we want it's um man i mean this process has been going on i know like, i was gonna say it's been going so it's on like for... eight or nine months and we keep getting like pushed back from like the you know kind of like the line there and i think we're what we're gonna do is um, we got good news this week yeah we did get good news that we're gonna basically they're just gonna start it next week now instead of like like mid July like we thought the shoes would be actually be out before like my regionals um and long story short that didn't happen but like regardless like we have um you know probably 20 images of shoes and colorways that we can op- can come out with like we were already talking about the 2.0 shoe coming out which is absolutely insane but the 1.0s are like fire so um yeah th- this process has been really fun and it's it's going to be just new waters that we get to uh figure out so for sure man fun. You're always up to something. I feel like you're always yeah. you always yeah. got something cooking. <laughs> yeah, always something cooking. Always something. So Crosby, I've asked Caden this, and I think you were actually mentioning this, but I'm gonna ask you. You could take three of your Wisconsin Parkside teammates with you into the zombie apocalypse. Who would it be and why? Give Ray to the zombie. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> three of them. I'm taking. I'm taking Easton War check just because. We're the best duo on the team. and uh, Commonly known as Ibala. Yep, he's known as Ibala on the Fortnite, on the sticks. So, uh, got to gotta run with him just because that's automatic survival. And then uh, I probably – I won't even need three. I'd probably just take him and Ray Ray just because he's our heavyweight. So, I just feel like – Hey, hey, you better watch the slander here, Crosby. Wait, wait. <laughs> me, hit him with- <laughs> we have three slowest people on our team is me, Easton, and Ray that is. is true. That is a fact. That is a fact. Crosby, Ray is probably faster than Crosby. No, 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 he's not. Very similar. No, he's not. Very similar. But 
if we're ever running away, me and Easton are gonna get away because Ray Ray will trail behind. You know what I mean? So you know what I mean. <laughs> so I just, okay, I, let me just say this. Crosby, okay, so we every year we do like these 10 hill sprints. <laughs> like, and it's a pretty long hill. Crosby was racing on the last lap. So everyone like probably everyone lapped them, maybe even twice. And Crosby and Ray no, are what don't yes. say everybody okay. lapped. Okay, maybe two people lapped you twice. The maybe the two and he probably got lapped once by one of them. Yeah, that's like, right. I wasn't like that far behind. It was just I was behind. Okay, but regardless, they're the last two running side by side. Well, and uh Easton. He was, oh, he was, he was he, he, but he was hurt, but he was hurt. And Jay, no, no. Yeah, but yeah, we were me and the heavy art and Ray Ray were. I mean, what you're not you're not like a small dude, right? You wrestled in 97, right? <laughs> I did one. Yeah. Okay. Like right now I'm like 190, but I wrestled 74 all season. Oh, you wrestled 74? Yeah. yeah. Like he went up two weights for that 97 duel. Yeah. I just did it for one duel just because yeah, our yeah, start yeah. 97 was hurt and we didn't want to pull the red shirt of our other guy. Yeah. So, made the sacrifice. Yeah. I mean, I definitely had better aspirations for that match, but, <laughs> you know. I mean, give it up. That's that's quite a bit of weight to give up from yeah. 74 to 97. Yeah. I think I, I weighed in at like, I think it was like 83, something like that. Yeah. But so anyway. next question. What go to cheat meal? I feel like Caden's has, has to be Culver's, right? You're a you're a big, big Culver's guy. I do love Culver's. I do love my Culver's. I'll say, man, I was in, I mean, crumble cookie. Like <sighs> we went to crumble a decent bit. And it's weird in the school year. And, you know, when you're wrestling, it's like you always have that weird, those weird cravings. Because I haven't even had a crumble cookie, a single one after a season. Just because it's, it's not like I'm trying to, like, eat better. I'm just, like, not craving it. But when you're in season and you're, your weight's fluctuating and you're, like, maybe feeling like you need a little something treat to reward, your, reward yourself or something, it's like crumble. We we had some crumble parties, that's for sure. That was crumble nice getting to pay for all the cookies. That is true. <laughs> yeah. I, I just put on the Clash of Combat credit card, so we were fine. <laughs> we don't have to pay that. It's, it's just free money. It's just free money. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The government, yeah, they don't need their money. It's fine. Yeah. I think we're still like our yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe we should make a minimum payment here soon on that nah. crumble. No. Well, <laughs> nah. you gotta pay off crumble cookie. Yeah, we just got one in my hometown, like I'd say like two months ago. And I think I've I've went twice. And really? I was like, this is pretty damn good. It's pretty right. damn good, pretty damn expensive. Sure. What state are you in? Pennsylvania. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> so we've talked about wrestling. We've talked about God. We've talked about Crosby shooting Ray Ray in the kneecap during the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> so let's we'll talk about this. I, I have had a couple of my friends, a couple of the guys, they've 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 said, listen, you need to tell Caden, we want to run the 3v3 box fight. Heavyweight Nation versus Clash of Combat on the sticks. Oh, you do not I want that. You, I hope you realize that. that this is not good for you guys. This is going to be a bad All look I'm going to say is two it of is my guys a very have, bad look. Two of my guys have earnings. That's all I'm going to say. Two of my guys have earnings. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we've been training for the FNCS. Yeah. Two yeah. of them have earnings, and You're... the same two have hit Unreal the last two seasons. It's gonna be a bad look for them when they That's lose. That's true. Them. It's gonna be bad. <laughs> lose to some platinum players. Yep. yep. Yeah. We we they uh they told me I was like, hey, talking to Caden, and they said, listen, right. we need to set up a three v three. If they play on thirty frames, and if they have over thirty ping, I'm good. Yeah. We run zero ping over here. Oh, we're we're not gonna run zero ping. <laughs> that's that's act that's actually disgusting of your teammates there who's got earnings. That's crazy. Yeah. He uh he actually wrestles Division Two as well. Really? Who is it? He goes to East Stroudsburg. My good friend. Uh, they were at, they were actually at a tournament with you guys. Really? Um, that Midwest or something? Yeah, Midwest. Yeah, they went. That's where Wait, I was. What, what too. school is that? East Stroudsburg University. East Stroudsburg. Yeah. Oh, is that in Pennsylvania? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they were at the. Uh, Did he get earnings on like the this, uh, Cash Cup or what? Yeah, back in back in high school, yeah, he used to play. In oh, so this uh, is way he's better. Washed, he's so no, smart. no, no, he's <laughs> he's good. We got we got him, my other friend Gags, who also wrestled there, and I, I of course I'd be in. I also wrestled there, so that's how we all met. 
and we we play Fortnite. Oh, we we play a lot. We play a lot. Dude, of I Fortnite. mean, they would be scared. They would be yeah. We have Walta, but also <laughs> they would be scared when they see that tomato head running around the corner with his pump out. You damn right. <laughs> like we'll have to set it up, man. We'll have to set up the the three v three. Maybe we could stream it. Uh huh. Actually, that I was um. Yeah, we yeah, I've been I've been debating here getting a PC to just stream and stuff because that would go crazy and I can't stream off of a Mac because it always crashes. So yeah, that's... yeah, we all we all play on PC, but we oh, all yeah. have we all have the console too. We can run the console too if we had to. I mean, I, I like to think I have the best aim in console Fortnite. So what? Yeah, man. Dude, also, now, okay. also that's it's also our Rainbow Six Siege team is the same three kids. So. We're pretty, we're pretty, we're pretty nasty, man. I don't Things know. Things are gonna get greasy. We just need like, or I shouldn't say we. I need like just a week to like hone in on my skills That's a little right. bit here. Well, yeah. and and also like it helps too when Crosby gets the timing down on on the Jack's Pizza right. because he plays right. really well right after a Jack's Pizza. So as long as it's not burnt, <laughs> mm-hmm. as well as he can get his practice run at the perfect amount of crisp. It, it, exactly. Wait, are we because, talking about like a like a like a five dollar Jack's frozen pizza? The one that comes so, to the plastic yeah, three for ten at festival. Yeah. <laughs> is is that like your that's your that's your cheat meal? That's my, that's my pre pre Fortnite routine. Pre yeah. Fortnite routine. Pre Fortnite routine, and I won't say it's a cheat meal because that would be like cheating myself. I would cheat true. myself by. Didn't Don't eat the pizza. That, exactly. Playing playing exactly. Yeah. And like, too, like if Crosby does, like, let's say die, which it, it's probably won't happen immediately. He might have to make a quick trip run mm-hmm. because he he runs back and forth a quick trip if some yep. shit hits the fan. But yep. I would be worried. That's what I'd just say. I'm not scared whatsoever. You don't want to see me after a quick trip. Listen, we got a kid. Got a kid. His name is Gags. Okay. He will make you have a quick trip run. (laughs) His name is Gags. Gags will be in the three weeks. That is a disgusting (laughs) name. That is so greasy for Fortnite. (laughs) Gags, Gags has Gags plays on average 16 hours a day. (laughs) Oh my god. Wait, wait. Let me look him up on Fortnite Tracker right now. What's his? How do you spell Gags? Hold on, hold on. I got, I got to text him. What's? His, I got to see his name. Hold on. It's not Gags. That's just his nickname. Well, I don't know if you understand too. Crosby's ad is Peterbot. Mm-hmm. Agent Peterbot. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, man. Getting a little nervous here. Getting a little nervous here. So, what? Like, has Fortnite been like a thing you guys always done? Is that like a like a thing you guys always just did for fun? Yeah, I definitely. feel like every wrestling team has played Fortnite. I feel like it's just a thing. His freshman year during like COVID, when I was still in high school, his freshman year at college, um, we would play literally every single night. Yeah, we do a lot of like hide and go seek creative. Yeah, we'd go. We would play. Oh, we lo- yeah. yeah, yeah. It was Zone Wars, Tilted Zone Wars. That that was like our thing for the longest time. We yeah. get like I- ten of us in there playing Tilted Zone Wars. Wait, Derek, how many wins do you have? Not a lot. Really? I'm I'm not a I'm not a not a uh a pubs player. I'm a um, I like the we played yeah. like I said, we played like the zone. They ranked. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, and I don't wanna like toot my own horn, but I'm in the top four percent of wins. We might get washed. <laughs> I'm getting a little nervous here. We but I came in real confident. I thought you guys were like part timers. No, 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 no. <laughs> part time. Like it, it's like part time no, wrestlers, like part time content creators, every time it's Fortnite players. Exactly. Exactly. Every time it comes to November, like sure, it's like wrestling season. Nah, like it's Fortnite it's, grind time. Yeah, like that's when we dial in and we we outsource our you know school for other people that they can do so we can have more time to yeah, play. We might, have to, we might have to hit up the East Strasburg esports team to get a third. Might have to, might have to call you know the what? Maybe, team. You know what? Maybe if a Parkside coaching position, if, if that's not in my cards, I could start up the Fortnite team at. Yeah, 100%. Esports coach. There you go. Caden Henschel. Dude, I'd love to see an esports motivational speech before tournament. <laughs> I would love this. But like, that. here's the thing: that'd be like, it'd be crazy to like imagine what that's like at like the professional COD tournaments. Like, um, optic is about to play, and there's just like their coach is just giving them like a crazy speech. Yeah, I go out I, there, get on those sticks. Like, I, I, you know what? This is motivating me to get a PC, and my girlfriend is not gonna like that. <laughs> not gonna like that at all. You know what? We'll talk a little bit about that too. What if that's been like? You've been with her for what since high school, right? Yep, we're going on six years here. Oh uh, so, man, where's man, the ring at, buddy? Serious, we're getting kind of serious. 
we'll be seeing the post here in a, in a year or two, right, gang? Yeah, maybe three or four. Who knows? Who knows? Then Crosby's gonna have to live on his own. What's that? Gonna, how's that gonna work out? Yeah, he's gonna be living off Jack's pizzas and quick, quick, quick trip yeah. snacks. Nothing new. <laughs> that is true. It'd be an ordinary thing. Maybe, maybe. Uh, it's funny. We uh, most random thing ever was we were playing Zone Wars, and I I invited Lucas Bird to play with us from Illinois, and he got on. And he played Fortnite with us. He good? Most random. <laughs> no, not a. <important. laughs> He's really good at Valorant. That's like his game is Valorant, uh, and uh. Cool. It went, he went pretty, he was crazy. We played Valorant together. He was pretty good. But Fortnite, yeah. nah. He I'm willing to bet that, that we have the best, really anything, solo, duo, trio, squad, team on our team in the entire NCAA. That's a good point. Whoa. And, like, I, yeah, that, and, like, I did want to say, too, like, again, like, the, um, because I know we're, we were filming kind of a day earlier than we would, but we, we just realized, we're like, holy shit, new Fortnite season. Yeah. We can't hop on a podcast. When yep. we have to grind out the next season. Yep. We cancel our Kale Sanderson pod tomorrow because yeah. the new season's coming out. Exactly. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. But, so. <laughs> sure. No, man. okay. We No. You know what? I'm going to say it right now so I can come back to this. In, in a year's time from today, we will have Kale Sanderson on the Clash of Combat podcast. Okay. Are, is, are you putting that out there for the world? Man, so the video is going to drop tomorrow. Is that what you're telling me? It might be. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? We've been cooking. We might be sitting on a stack. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't surprise me if you guys just had like five like banger guest podcasts filmed, just sitting in your in the vault, just waiting for like uh somebody to cancel, and you're be like, ah, oh, perfect timing. Post. Yeah, Mine so- has been okay. Random. My one guest. I'm you know I'm gonna put it out there too. So randomly about a year ago, I don't know if you guys, you guys growing up ever watched WWE, mm-hmm. but about a year ago, Mark Henry from the WWE followed Heavyweight Nation. And really? since that day, I wanted to get Mark Henry on the podcast. I think really? it would just be the funniest thing on this planet. Beat him up, beat him up. Beat him. <laughs> I think it would just be so fun. Wow. I remember him from the video game. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it That's would just be deep. so funny. To just and he he followed us because his son is like a big wrestler in Texas, is and I, I think he plays he either plays he either plays football in college now or he wrestles in college, but he followed us and I was like that day I was like I'm gonna get Mark Henry on the podcast. The amount of DMs and emails I've sent to him and he's never even opened. <laughs> really, I have, I have yet to get in contact with Mark Henry, but it's gonna happen. Get that man part ownership, man. <laughs> I think it would be so entertaining to just oh, sit yeah. here with Mark Henry and talk. He's never and he's I don't, actually the world's strongest man. Yeah, he was. yeah, he did. He, <laughs> was. Was. he, he yeah. actually won a competition. Yeah. yeah, he was like the world's strongest man back in like the early 2000s, 90s. Damn. So I thought that would be pretty fun to uh to get on. That would probably be one. Oh, what would be number two? Probably, probably, probably Kale too, man. I think everybody yeah. wants to talk to Kale. I feel like he's so mysterious, though. I feel like having him on a podcast, like, you wouldn't be able to, like, get anything out of him. Like, yeah, I, we'll, I get, we'll break I, him. I'm not going to lie, too. Like, it could be a thing where it literally is just overhyped. Like, yeah. he can just be very good at getting good people in who he knows are going to perform. That's like, I, I do think that's also a thing that's, like, it's so interesting to, like, really deep dive. What is he doing? What is he doing? It Dude, could be nothing special. You're not it, wrong. I don't. I don't think. I. I don't think it is, especially from the people we talked about. Like, of course, there's stuff you can do. There's visualize visualization tricks. There's. Your I think stuff. it's a lot of mental. It's. I know. Like, I went to two, two, uh, two like week long camps at Penn State, and the one thing that they did all the time, mm-hmm. same song plays the whole entire time you're doing anything. Yeah. So like we did the run from Rec Hall to Beaver Stadium. And same, they had they had big speakers they ran with, and it was same thing, same song really? over and over again. Really? That's yeah. I mean, well, I remember like when we had like Bass on the pod when he broke the news of that. Like they had like, you know, what does the fox say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Old Town Road. That was like the song for like really? the one yeah. camp I went to was Old Town Road, and it played the entire time. It was terrible. Horrible. That and dodgeball. They play a lot of dodgeball at Penn State. Oh, yeah. yeah. We played we played like two and a half hours of dodgeball. Us two, one of our other teammates, and Bo Bartlett. 
mm-hmm. at like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And and like that, again, too, like Kale was looking through the window and he he was like, we need to get them because of their dodgeball skill. Yep. And we're like, no, Kale, not today. Like we have <laughs> we have our obligation. Well, yeah. Parkside's NIL is also a lot better. Than yeah, of course. Of course. Our, yeah. our, our donor game from our, our past Olympic champions have been up there. So it's it's a horse apiece, but. Of course. So, mm-hmm. so, so far from this podcast, I've heard you've turned down Penn State mm-hmm. and you've turned down Oklahoma State with David Taylor. Yeah, no, exactly. And well, and with a guaranteed starting starting position yeah. there too. For both. At both places or just for, at Oklahoma State? Uh, I mean, well, like, at, you know, when I made my committee to Penn State post, um, Bo Bartlett um, gave me his spot basically um, in okay. the comments. There. So that is basically guaranteed just regardless. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we'll have to play it by ear with that one. Play it by yeah. ear for sure. Play it by ear for sure. Of course, man. Like, why? Why not? Right? Yeah. Anybody could just walk into Penn State and be like, you know, I'm going to start at this weight class, right? It's well, I I don't know. You got to get permission. You got to get permission. I'm so. sure. And what was that process kind of like getting in the wrestling room at Penn State? Was that like kind of jumping through hoops a little bit, or was it kind of easy? Yeah. Shout out to Imran. Shout out to Imran <laughs> for getting us in there putting us through uh through a nice little workout but it's definitely like surreal but also it like felt like yeah like we're like supposed to be doing whatever we're doing it was just like it was just like living it too yeah. but also it's just like we're not driving seven hours to not get in the room like right, yeah. like we kind of you know already knew kind of going in yeah. so oh don't worry i have a story for you i can't talk about it on the uh on the on the recording but after I have a I have a story to talk about, which is kind uh, of funny for sure. Which is a, fans. A, <laughs> <laughs> not the only fans, man. Uh, no. uh, the heavy to only fans goes crazy. <laughs> you know, you're giving me ideas, Caden. I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm oh, cooking oh. right now. Hey, if you need a film or a uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, we just that that's that's something that's 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 something for sure man i don't know i think uh i think that might be how well we end this video <laughs> there is no heavyweight nation only fans there will never be a heavyweight nations only fans um maybe a clash of combat only fans you know you, you know there already is one <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah man We'll give it away for free for the first 10 people that like this video. We get a free subscription to the heavyweight nation only fan. Very true. It's That's wild, man. So we've ta- I feel like we've, we've touched a lot of bases, man. We talked wrestling. We talked, talked a little bit of God, talked a little bit about, you know, y- your future and, and everything. I've, I've, that was pretty much a lot of what people asked was what's going to come after wrestling's over for you. But I feel yeah. like you'll be a super sick camp clinician. I feel like bringing you out to camps and stuff will be like, that'll be good for the next five years. Yeah, no, I, I of course there's always that thing. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I have like 10 camps this summer. I, I've never really done like, you know, let's just say like a multiple, multiple session whole day type deal, but you know, that's one thing that I think um, I can, it can make it super fun and enjoyable for the kids and, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, man, for sure. And Crosby, it's been a yeah. pleasure. Let me tell you, you're one of the most difficult people to get in contact with. What? Uh, I, I followed you because here's the thing nobody ever realizes is like I I everybody that I've ever got on the podcast Kyle Dake you know everybody I've sent them DMs on my personal Instagram account never the Heavyweight Nation page never never so it's always just my personal Why? Instagram wait you sent me a DM yeah and it said well actually hold on hold on hold on I didn't send you a DM because I got a message that says and I quote this person cannot receive DMs. Really? This account, look, look. How do I switch to that? Right. It's I don't know. Bottom. Also, that that might be a glitch too, because I had that same problem with Aiden Sinclair. Yeah, because they can't. You can't receive new message requests. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I need to fix that somehow. It's all. It's all right. You know, I respected it. I, 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 I was like, you know what? It's all right. He doesn't think I'm cool enough. It's fine. I actually did not know that. <laughs> A little bit. I did get the DM from Heavyweight Nation. Mm-hmm. Why don't you use your Heavyweight Nation account when it can go to the top of people's requests? Because I've always done it this way, and I've had pretty decent success doing it that way. Yeah, so you it, have it's, more. You it's have a, more success. It's like a principle. It's like a principle thing for me. Oh, Plus, that's right. Like it's like like all of our big guests. Like the fact that I've done it myself, it's been pretty funny. Like I yeah. mean. 
I did it myself with Kyle Dank. Did it myself with like Lee Kemp, who's an old head, who like I don't even know if he even ran his own Instagram. Yeah. Um, but I buttered him up by bringing his son on the podcast first, and then I asked him after the fact. I was like, "Hey, you want to come on the podcast?" And he was like, "Yeah, sure." So he was. Wait, wasn't there? I thought there's. Was, isn't there a second guy that works with you? Yeah. Yeah, he has. He just does the podcast. He has right? not shown his. I do a little of, of every of everything. Yeah. He hasn't shown his face in a video. I kind of took over this part. Uh, okay. I don't know. I felt like I had the better personality for it, so I was just like, "I'll I'll take care of all this stuff, and you just uh, focus a little bit more on the Instagram stuff," which is dope. But I I'm definitely gonna, you know, I got about a year left of school. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll be a nurse. So nice. I, uh, I think I'm planning on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to double, we're going to double down here. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm going to start, I'm going to be a travel nurse, I think for at least a year or two. And I think that'll be a cool way for me to be a travel nurse and then film in-person podcasts while I'm traveling. Because oh. most of the time when you're a travel nurse, they pay you per diem. So <laughs> I'll get paid to go yeah. to a hospital in Wisconsin, a hospital in you know, New York, yeah. uh, you know, a hospital, you know, near Penn State. And mm-hmm. I think it'll be a cool way for me to do that and travel and start filming. Yeah, that'd be cool. Do you think, do you think that um, getting like that job and anything is going to overshadow what you're doing with Heavyweight Nation? It's going to depend. I think it'll make things a little bit more difficult, but most nurses work 412s. So, I mean, it's only oh, four sure. days. So you're working 48 hours, you get eight hours of overtime. So, I mean, unless we have like a knock on wood, another like epidemic break, you know, breakout, you know, yeah. COVID type situation where, you know, nurses were working seven days a week for weeks on end. Yeah. I hope not. I hope I'll still be able to have a life and still do, you know, at the end of the day, I love doing this and it's been, we've been doing it since I was 15, 16 years old. So, mm-hmm. you know, obviously I'm not, a, not at the Caden Henschel level. But I love what I do. I know I, sure. I enjoy it, and it's 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 about the experience. It's how it's all you know. It's what it's always been. It's about yeah. meeting new people and talking and getting to know people. And now you know, I feel like I could say I'm pretty decent friends with some of the guys I've talked to, and I've never met them before. Like like me and Braxton Amos, like we talk almost every day, especially you know as of lately. So. Sure. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's what it's about. And I'm sure you could agree. It's a lot like obviously like the monetary value and the numbers and stuff. That's all nice. But the kid inside me and I'm sure the kid inside you is flipping out that you've met some of the people that you've met and talked to before. Yeah. No, yeah, that is true. It's like you think like, you know, when you are, you know, let's say freshman in high school, it's been like if you could realize that the dude like you're going to start filming and like being, let's say, you know, acquaintances basically with like like you want you want to talk to olympic champs you want to have a practice with you know want to scrap with the best in the country best in the world it's like dude you can do that and i i don't think that that was available to people like before like social media began taking a taking a you know a role so it's crazy sure, man. yeah i think um social media is one thing like i always tell everybody like you just just do it like sure. what's the point like so what who cares yeah. if you yeah. want to you want to sing on the internet go sing on the internet i don't i don't care. like you just Cros- crosby's karaoke new second looking to grow the brand i've been, been looking thinking. to grow the brand crosby's karaoke yeah, dance videos but <laughs> okay um i think you kind of missed the mark on that a little bit but it's all right <laughs> you know it's, i'm sure you, you want to see a little example crosby, yeah, crosby, crosby, crosby give us a little there's bit room. Room. i'm good I'm there's room. room no i didn't know i don't because then the whole podcast is just going to be about me dancing. I don't want to take the shine away from any of the other topics, you know? Respect, 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 for sure. For sure. So I think we'll we'll, we'll end it here, man. It's been a, a great episode. With, we got to introduce Crosby to Heavyweight Nation. Caden is, you know, Caden's been around the block. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's been another episode of the Heavyweight Nation podcast. We'll see you guys later.